Hi, this is Rob Shore, Director of Global Technical Sales for Corient. In this video, what I want to do is take a look at two different types of network architectures when building transport network. Circuit switch network architectures and packet switch network architectures. The key uh, aspect of this video is to try to understand the differences between them and how they work, how they operate, and even some of the implications that has uh, when building different networks. We're going to start off by taking a look at circuit-based transport networks. Circuit-based networks operate by transmitting frames at very regular intervals. So for example, let's say I have this location that I have three three incoming services, and I have frames coming at, let's say, one frame per second on each of these individual interfaces. One of the things I can do is I can aggregate and multiplex those different physical interfaces onto a single interface that's transmitting information at four times the speed, right, at four frames per second. And the way that I do this is by each one of these frames is marked as a different time slot. So I have four different time slots to work with for these four different frames per second. Now what I'll do is I'll map the traffic from each of these individual clients onto a specific time slot. So the traffic coming from this first port, I'll map that to time slot 1, from port 2 to time slot 2, and so on. Of course, I can map them to any time slot. But the idea here is I have a time slot that's associated with a specific port. And that time slot is providing the same speed of services. I'm transmitting frames at the same rate on that time slot as this incoming signal. Because again, I'm doing it four times as fast. So I've got four times, four frames per second, the combination of these four physical interfaces at one frame per second. Now the idea again is I'm transmitting frames at regular intervals. Uh, time slot 1 is always first, second, time slot 2 is second. So again, the time slots are always in the same order. So when I arrive at the next destination, I can actually steer traffic and drop traffic strictly based on time slot. Essentially, if I want to drop traffic from this port and send that through the network to this port, I know that traffic from this port is being mapped onto time slot 1. And at this intermediate location, I can just instruct it to drop traffic from time slot 1. Now I'm going to be counting the frames, and I'm going to look what's ever in time time slot 1, and on every time slot 1, I can extract that and drop it out the port. And here I'm dropping all the traffic from time slots 1 and 3. So again, this is the idea on how I got traffic from the client side onto an aggregated line side, and then how I drop that traffic at intermediate locations. Of course, now I've dropped time slots 1 and 3, so on the next transmission out the other direction, time slots 1 and 3 are now empty. So I can also at the same time add traffic uh, to time slot 1. Right Now I'm sending the information out and I can add this purple traffic to take the place of the green traffic that was dropped and filled in now into time slot 1. But you will notice something interesting, right? One of the key aspects of circuit-based transmission is they transmit frames in the same order on a very regular basis. Meaning, even though I don't have any information in time slot 3, I'll still transmit it. I'll still transmit empty frames to maintain my frame order. This is a big plus and minus for circuit-based networks. One of the benefits, of course, is that because I have frames at very regular intervals, these types of services are inherently very reliable because I know frames are going to come at very regular intervals. And if I ever miss a frame, I immediately know there's a problem because I'm expecting frames. Or if the frames come out of order for any reason, I'll know that right away. So that's one of the big benefits. One of the downsides, though, is because I have very specific mappings from clients to time slots, and those time slots come at regular intervals, what I end up really with is a network here that's a bunch of fixed size pipes. Yeah, I can have an aggregated pipe here, but that's really a combination of these smaller pipes, and each of those pipes are very fixed sizes, right? Because time slot one is only transmitted every fourth frame. So I get very consistent, very inherently reliable networks, uh, but not very flexible because these pipes are very fixed sizes. And essentially, even if I have no information to transmit on one pipe, I'm still going to send the empty frame. So nobody else can use that bandwidth. It's just an empty frame that goes through the network. So this is really the fundamentals of circuit-based transport networks. Now let's take a look at packet-based transport networks, which look very different. The idea with packet-based networks is it only transmits information when there's information to transmit. The idea is here, if I have a, a pipe here that I can transmit four frames per second, and there's nothing coming in, I'm not going to transmit anything. It's just going to sit there with nothing going on. Then when a frame comes in, I'll transmit that frame. And then I'll wait for the next frame. And when the next frame comes in, I'll transmit that frame. But one of the real benefits of this, right, is that this bandwidth now can be accessible to any of these client-side interfaces, really at any rate. So if I have a burst of traffic coming from one port, let's say I got three frames coming all at once, and nobody else is using this bandwidth, that bandwidth can be consumed and completely dedicated uh, to that one uh, service. So again, what I have here is a much more flexible pipe that can be used by any of these uh, interfaces, and, and really at any rate. So now the idea, though, is that because I don't have this consistent time slot where I can designate and identify and steer traffic just based on counting and, and the time slots that the frames come in at, uh, I need another mechanism. These mechanism is called labels to steer traffic. 
The idea is I can add these labels, and by the way, when I say label, it's just a generic term I'm using. It could be VLANs, MAC addresses, IP addresses, LSPs. It could be anything. I'm just generically using the term label. But the idea is I can use these labels. Now, in fact, I need these labels uh, to help me steer traffic in different directions because I can't count. There's no definitive time that this traffic is going to come in. So as I go across the network and I arrive at this intermediate location, uh, I instruct this location to say, hey, Take anything with label 3, look at all the labels of all the incoming traffic, anything with label 3 and drop it out this port. So that's the idea. So now as, uh, and same thing for adding traffic, right? I can add traffic, go from this port, look for anything with label 5 and add that to the stream. So right, so now as the traffic comes in at all these different rates, I can multiplex it together, I can flexibly use this bandwidth on this pipe, I get this intermediate location, I can add and drop and steer traffic and aggregate traffic pretty much in any way just by managing these different labels. Now, the benefit of that, of course, is I can more flexibly use the bandwidth on this pipe. But the other benefit of that is that I'm not really restricted on a per port basis, right? With circuit-based networks, I look at everything on a port. I don't read any of it. I just take everything on that port and map it into one of my time slots. With packet-based network, I can actually read the individual labels. This now enables me to take traffic from an individual port and steer traffic with different labels on that port to different destinations. So on this one physical port coming in here, I can drop some traffic, send some traffic through in pretty much any bandwidth in any kind of direction. So it's not only significantly more flexible, it's also significantly more efficient. And these are some of the benefits of packet-based networks. Now, having said that, packet-based networks don't have the inherent reliability uh, that circuit-based networks have, right? Because circuit-based networks, I'm having frames come at very regular intervals, I inherently get reliability uh, and, and a lot of operational features. With packet-based networks, there's really been a lot of evolution over the last, uh, I don't know, X number of years uh, that integrate some of that function because you don't get it inherently. So there's a whole host now of protocols that have been developed uh, to ensure that packet-based networks can now achieve the same level of reliability, and, and actually in some cases even better reliability than circuit-based networks. But it has been one of the historical issues of packet-based networks that they weren't as reliable as circuit-based networks. Uh, I do think that the industry has, has well overcome those challenges now. Right? And as I said, I think packet-based networks can achieve at least the same level of reliability as circuit-based networks, uh, and in some cases, as I said, even better reliability. So essentially, right, just to summarize, uh, right, what we've got here is a network base still on these kind of pipes, right, but really not, not so much pipes as much as flows, right, because pipes kind of implies a fixed based size of traffic flow. And really what I have here is a flexible pipe, right, where I can have multiple flows across it, and those flows can be basically any size. This also provides another really significant benefit. The idea is because uh, I can share the bandwidth on this one pipe, right, I can put this one 10 gig link up between it, but because nobody's going to, it's not going to transmit anything unless there's information to transmit, what it enables me to do now is share that bandwidth over more of my client side interfaces. So for example, I can have four 10 gigs worth of traffic coming in, but if I count on the fact that not all four of them are going to be transmitting at 10 gig all the time, I can actually multiplex all those together into a single 10, by 10 gig pipe going out. Now again, they can't all go at 10 gig at any time, although any one of them could go at 10 gig at any one time, and as long as nobody else is using this bandwidth, I can get the full 10 gig of information from any one client to the line. But the whole idea behind this is I'm counting on the fact that not all of these are going to be going at full rates, and this enables me now to provide more services out of my client side, right? I can provide more high speed services without having to dedicate bandwidth through the core of my network for each one of these physical interfaces. I can count more on the nature of the way people use bandwidth, which is more bursty and, and really you know, goes up and down over time. So again, this is another one of the big benefits of a packet-based transport solution is the ability to aggregate traffic uh, across multiple interfaces on a smaller, more efficient uh, line-side network transmissions. So this essentially is the, the kind of the sum of uh, the difference between circuits and packets, right? Circuit-based network uses what I call this, this per port-based mapping where a single physical interface and all the traffic on that physical interface is mapped to a specific pipe on the line side and that pipe is a very specific size, a fixed size, right? And I'm matching now physical interfaces uh, to network pipes, right? So again, the nice part is it comes with a lot of inherent reliability uh, and again, it's very, very definitive the way that these networks work. On the packet side of things, you have a much more flexible based solution now where I can take all of these different client side interfaces uh, and I can multi multiplex them together into these line sides and they all share the bandwidth on the line side, right? Enable me to more flexibly use that bandwidth because I'm steering things based on uh, labels rather than based on time slots and ports. Uh, I can also steer the traffic more flexibly in the network.
Okay? Again, there are pluses and minuses to both of these different implementation types, uh, and not one solution is perfect for every solution. Uh, but having said that, I do have another video, if you'd like to check that out, that talks more detail about packet-based networks and some of what I think are the very definitive advantages that packet-based networks have in a wide variety of solutions and scenarios uh, over circuit-based networks. So uh, feel free to check that out and you get into more details of, of, of some of those benefits. Uh, and if you have any more interest in any other Corient solutions or technologies or videos, uh, please feel free to visit us at uh, Corient.com. And that uh, comes to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching.